Okay, update here. Car is actually up and running. Um, everything is installed. Had a little bit of a scare um, the other night. Tried to rush some things and ended up with a huge vacuum leak which caused oil to get into the intake which filed out the plugs. Really scared me and um, just tried to rush things along while I was waiting for some JB Weld to cure because I really wanted to get it started um, and I shouldn't have done that. Um, JB Weld cured for the intake. Uh, the pieces that I'll show in just a second reinstalled new or put in new spark plugs um, and things it started up like a dream after I kind of cleaned out some oil that had gone pretty much everywhere um, replaced the oil and put some seafoam in so I'm kind of running some seafoam through the crankcase um, ran some through the through the intake as well so I, I'm able to go and boost but I'm kind of taking it easy for the next like about 100, 100 miles and then I'll, I'll kind of go from there but um, so let's I'll show you what I got um, the last little bit. I think last left off with the um, the oil feed return coolant line was pretty easy. Kind of didn't really go too far into depth in that, but so you can see the, the intercooler's installed, obviously, um, and the intake is installed. Those are the two things that I did, which the intake or the intercooler, pretty easy, obviously. Just, again, use that G plus Y pipe. goes on pretty easy. It's, 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 it's too long for a WRX, but perfect for us. Um, this build, and then uh, obviously the throttle body, and then the uh, blow off valve, which you're going to have to vent atmosphere because you just don't have the room between that and the throttle body. There's just no room. Um, so we'll go over, well, I guess I can go over the vacuum line while I'm over here as well. So this is the vacuum line um, that goes to the blow off valve, and what's going back here is to my actual boost gauge in the car. So this vacuum line, we're going to trace it all the way down actually runs to right here so I installed a Y here to Y off this line would just normally go right into the block or the uh, the intake manifold so I wide off and that's where I get this and then it Y's back to where it would normally go really easy just bit, just installing a Y right there or a T and then this would go this line actually again it's the stock line this line actually um, tees right here. One part goes to this sensor right over here, and then the other part actually goes down and around to the fuel regulator. You can kind of see it right down there. That's it. Okay, so that's the vacuum line, vacuum line intercooler setup. Pretty easy. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated and just, oh man, this was just fun. Okay, so um, obviously, <laughs> This is the uh, air filter, MAF. We're doing a MAF install here, um, not MAP. So then we have a three inch to two and a half inch elbow. You can buy this on eBay or on Amazon. I think it was like 10 bucks. And then this is where the magic really happens. Showed the Cobra head that's going to the turbo. Showed that in the last video. Um, this, is the, this is a 2.5 inch pipe that I got from, it's an exhaust pipe from AutoZone. Pretty cheap, it's like three bucks. And then I just have brass fittings going in here. So these brass fittings are in sizes of five eighths, one half, and then five eighths. You can use different sizes. It's just, that's just that was most convenient for me because that's what I had laying around. And these can get kind of pricey. So let's go through each one. So again, you're just going to drill a hole with like a step drill bit, and uh, and then just kind of screw these in as far as you can, or pretty far. You don't want to go. You don't have to go all the way in, and it just make it really tight. And then I JB welded it, which you have to let sit for a day. So first one, 5 8 90 degree elbow off the 5 8 to another 5 8 This is all um, fuel or PCV line, so again, because oil may be coming through here. Um, and then this goes down and around. There's an adapter from 5 8 to 3 quarters. That 3 quarters goes into the idle air control. So that's that one. Kind of a tight fit, but this all is. Second one. This is going to be the half inch, so 5 eighths, half inch, 5 eighths adapters. So half inch pipe all the way down to right here. And that's for the uh, the crankcase ventilation. So I, I showed in the last video, the, I took the 3 quarter inch pipe that was originally on this idle air control, which was about 8 inches long, um, and took the one off the crankcase and then replaced it with the one that was here. So it comes up to about right there. And then I actually cut the little access that I had left and used it here. So again, take the take the three quarter inch hose off of this from the stock one, 
put it on the crankcase after you take that hose off there. It goes down like this, put it down there, and then cut the excess off, cut the, oh, till it comes up right about to the right of their control there. Cut the excess off, and that's where you're going to be using for this adapter here. So um, it comes up to about right here, and then there's a Y, that, there's a stock Y that I used. Um, part of it goes to the PCV, which is right here. Make sure you put a hose clamp on that. And again, the other part goes to the intake. Again, keep these separate. Don't don't try to do it all in one nipple. You'll regret it. Um, probably have some idle issues. You, you you don't. Some could be getting vacuum. Some could be getting boost. You don't you don't want to just keep them all separate. Okay, so the last one five eighths adapter to one half. Again, you could have just done a one half. I could have just done one half here, but I had this adapter already and it wasn't that big of a deal. So half to this T, if you will, that goes from valve breather to valve breather, and. Uh, that's it. That's uh, no one really goes into the intake or the vacuum too much, but that, that that I think that'll come in handy for most people as well. Cause I had to kind of figure out that on my own the first time. Um, the other issue they're into. So I got the car up and running after I changed the plugs out and installed the intake. Um, everything was running great. When I was driving, when I was idling, it was kind of surging and it would run like pretty rich. Um, so I knew probably there was like vacuum leak somewhere. Um, or some sort of, some form of leak, um, and I had this same problem on my previous build. Um, and if I wouldn't have, it took me forever to figure this out on my previous build, and it would have it would have taken me a while here as well if I wouldn't have remembered it. So this will come in handy for people too. So having idling issues, um, cars running great otherwise, but just kind of a lobing or you know surging idle where it's kind of just jumping up in the RPMs, it's stalling. Um, so with the with the blow-off valve here, again, we're vent to atmosphere. Normally, this would be running back into the intake. We can't do that. We don't have that option. And you may not even use the stock blow-off valve. You may use an aftermarket one that's still vent to atmosphere. Um, if you're using a vent to atmosphere, what happens is um, this line right here, which is a vacuum line, um, is, it, it pulls kind of on the spring that's inside. And there's also a vacuum coming from here, but this vacuum is going to be a little bit harder because the, this, is, this is more full. This is direct, like, on that. So it's going to actually pull the spring open slightly at idle. Um, and then when you actually are driving the car, um, it, it kind of like offsets. So the, the valve actually isn't open. So what you need to do is, and you can kind of see from here, is crush the ball off valve. And you can do that in two ways. You can put in a vise, which is probably the, the cleaner way to do it. I, um, I did this on my previous car with a vise. I don't have a vise anymore. I lost a bunch of my tools. So um, what I actually, you can use a C-clamp as well, but um, what I actually did was just take like a ball peen and just kind of lightly tap. Again, you don't want to bang on it like as hard as you can. Just tap right here in this area. Just kind of round it out like tap here, 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 here. You can bang it in the, directly in the middle, but it's kind of harder to hit it. Um, and then just don't pound it in until there's nothing left. I mean, give it a good decent, like I'd say about, you know, quarter quarter of an inch, maybe half inch in. Um, and what that does is it creates more spring tension on the blow-off valve. So now that that spring and then there's not as much play between that and the and the actual spring anymore so in so doing i did that actually while the car was running because i knew it was the problem again i was like what was that problem that i ran into last time with the i thought and i remembered and so i was like it was the blow off valve so i just like tapped it literally with a with a hammer and the first tap i gave was a very light tap it already started it stopped like surging i was like that, that was the issue now i remember so um, that's another tip there because most people will probably be running that valve. Um, just remember to do that. Again, the only issue that you get with a crushed blow off, blow off valve is that you may get some compressor, compressor, uh, compressor surge if you push it in too far. So don't go, go to town on it. And by a compressor surge, I mean, you'll hear it when, when you're supposed to be blowing off, when you're supposed to hear that noise when you're in between shifts, which I despise, but I have to really do that right now. Um, instead of that, you hear like a flutter, like a kind of like a, it won't, it will sound like a turkey gobbler. It won't really sound right. So with this, like there's kind of a good in-between. So with no crushing, it was so loud. Like every shift, it was like, like it was very, very, very loud because it was, you know, it was a looser spring. Now it's a tighter spring. So it's just a quick, very quick and it's it's much more calm. If I push it in more, it, it 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 wouldn't really blow off at all, and you'd be able to hear that surging of the air not being released, and then going back, 
uh, to the turbo and kind of back spinning it, if you will. So again, lightly with that, you can't really screw it up. And even if you do, those valves are like 30 bucks. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and start it. Um, so I can show you kind of what it's doing there. Start. See the AFRs here. As the O2 sensor heats up, vacuum looks good. It's obviously cold, so it's going to run a little bit rich. But yeah, sounds really good. Um, because I have the stock exhaust on, the stock STI exhaust, um, it's really pretty quiet back. Very quiet. All the noise is actually coming from the front. Yeah. Turn it off here. Um, I will make a couple more videos. Um, one being one being a third gear pull, um, comparing uh, NA to turbo, because I took a video previously um, before it was turbocharged, a uh, third gear from like 2,000 RPMs to 6,000 RPMs, um, just to kind of so I can do a before and after, um, and I'll do that in third gear, just because fourth gear and fifth gear. I mean that's. Getting too high up there. Second, I could have done, but I don't know. I just with third gear, I could do it on the on an on ramp and not really worry about speeding too much. So I mean, third gear only goes up to about seventy, and that's perfect for highway speed. So um, the other, the other thing that I, I need to do is I was thinking about it. I didn't replace the fuel pump. Kept the stock fuel pump in for the for a ninety seven. Um, again, second and third is what I've I've done. I've tested really quick right now. It's running. Uh, 0.5 bar, so roughly what seven, seven psi, seven point three psi is what I think on that. That that was like I got to hit that once. Um, so the the AFRs are around uh, high 11s. I'd, I'd like them closer to low or you know mid or low 11s. Um, so I may replace the fuel pump. I have a war bar up here um, that I may do this weekend. So I've just had that laying around. I was, I was trying to do it as cheaply as possible. Um, just because I've done this again once before and I was like, what do I really need? What don't I need? Um, and we can go from there. But um, on my last build, uh, I had a stock 2.2, but I had a, a WRX transmission laying around. So I just used that WRX transmission from like an 03. Um, and it was it was obviously beefy enough to handle that power. This is the stock. Um, well, I mean, it's a stock, like some 94 legacy um, transmission. Uh, so I didn't replace the clutch. Um, I, I gave it some synchro mesh, like when I first got the car about three months ago for the gears, cause I noticed like an occasional grind, um, that made it completely go away. So I'm, I have had no clutch slip in second or third. Um, I'm worried fourth and fifth may have some. And again, I'm only running, um, six and a half, seven PSI. I'm hoping to get closer to nine or 10 and kind of level out there. Um, but I should be good. It seems to, the transmission seems to be holding fine. I may need to replace the clutch. But the transmission right now seems to be holding very well. So again, I'll, I'll update with um, with the, the before and after for this kind of like the speed and, and power gains, if you will. Um, but for right now, it feels very, very fast. Um, not extremely fast, but I've, I've had cars with, you know, 80 wheel Subarus with 80 wheel horsepower all the way up to, you know, close to 400. Um, and this feels around like 200, um, I'd say, at the wheels. Definitely like 50, 60 horsepower gain, like which is like a 50% increase to this to this motor. So um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely it'll keep up with probably a stock STI. Um, I'd say uh, stage two WRX, and when I when I say this, I'm referring to like the GD, like the O2 to O7s. I've I haven't really touched like um, from um, 08 
higher STIs. I've kind of like stayed 07 and back when it comes to Subaru. So, um, yeah, everything looks good. And, uh, again, if you guys have any questions, I tried to cover everything I could. This is the build from start to finish. Um, again, made just install the fuel pump. But that's pretty much it. I don't need, I don't know if it's really needed, but, uh, thanks for watching.